Big Brother's bit on the side. Much like the newest addition to the royal family, we are small, we are very big news, and one day we will be king! Yeah. Yeah. Show. I mean, where else would you get this? Sorry, I'm done with it. You have her. I'm sick of her. You have her. Really? Yeah. You have her. Uh, mixed with a little bit of this. I shouldn't damn well yeah. think you do. He's 23. No. You are how old you are. It's disgraceful. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Topped off by this. Oh my god, I'm right! <laughs> ah! uh, okay, so there's there's loads to get through tonight, so let's meet our panel. My first guest is a gentleman obsessed with the Regency rakes from the 1800s and the British upper class system. Contender, quite possibly, for the most random intro this series. It's the one and only Scott Mason. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you. <laughs> now it's time to uh, bring it all back to my next guest. It's the pop starlet that don't stop moving and who'll always bring the S Club party with her. Uh, you're my number one, Tina Barrett. <laughs> one day we will stop with the S Club song lyrics references. Um, no, bring it on. I'm, okay, I'm, used, we'll just, I'm used to it. We'll just so. it That's fine. Uh, and completing yeah. our lineup is an Aussie soap legend <laughs> who has ventured all the way from Down Under to move in next door to us. Everybody needs good neighbours, and we've invited ours over for a little ting wag. It's the amazing Mark Little. <laughs> Emma! Thank you. We're good. Neighbours references as well. No, I, don't, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. No, don't believe me because we won't. Uh, okay, shall we get? Shall we go? Shall we? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, okay. Let's start. Let's start with the reaction to the latest Safe House twist. Lots of people on Friday night uh, in, in the audience were going, "Big Brother sucks!" Boo. Uh, Dan though is delighted to have uh, immunity, <laughs> but doesn't have immunity. Mark, do you feel sorry for him? Oh, look. There's a big part of me that feels sorry for all of them. Emma. Yeah, absolutely. But that's not the idea of the show, is it? No, it's not. No, I don't feel sorry for him at all. <laughs> I think if there's one bloke in that house needs to be knocked down a peg or two, it might be Dan. Really? Oh, yes. Why like so? Well, I don't know. He just seems quite full of himself. Uh, he knows how to work the show. He knows how to get on camera because he yaps. He, he can talk the leg of a statue, wouldn't he? He, can yeah. just, <laughs> he just talks, 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 talks. He knows exactly how to get the camera around to him. He's, and he's always played Mr. Detective. He's always yes. tried to work it out. But this time, Big Brother has snafu'd him. Because he's got this immunity, he's forgotten to think, maybe I'm being played. So it's good to see Dan That's actually... That's a really good point. It's good to see Dan actually, like, snafu'd. Yeah. Got Are we you. surprised that he hasn't tweaked to this? Yes. Dexter's tweaked to that. Dexter has actually said, um, maybe there's something bad in that house. Uh, Everything, everybody yeah. goes in there, has something a else. Bad experience. It's a bad experience. Yes. Dexter's worked that one out, but Dan hasn't. He's going to throw his teddy bear in the corner big time. <laughs> uh, now, one person that wasn't very happy this evening was uh, Jack. Tina, do you think he was right to feel a little bit gutted that he wasn't invited in there? Yeah, I think because um, because they're all dying to get in that room and have like the champagne and all the treats. So I can I can see why he felt a bit you know pissed off. But um, I think you know he'll obviously be happy once he knows the secret. He is going to be so relieved come Friday. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be like thank you. <laughs> uh, the rest uh. of the housemates, as we know, they're all up. Um, Scott, do, we, do you think we'll see their? Well, they think they're up. Sorry, do you think we will see their behaviour change this week because they? They're all going to kind of maybe be on their best behaviour because they think they could potentially be evicted. Oh, yeah. They've already started to play it down. They're like saying, they're all being humble and gracious. They're saying, oh, I've, done, I've achieved everything I've wanted to achieve. They're <laughs> saying that, oh, I'm so pleased for Dan that he's got in there. That's just ridiculous. Do you think they're not pleased for Dan? Well, of course, they'd want to be in there. They're just, yeah. they're oh, just yeah. pretending. All those hugs, ridiculous. like, well done hugs. Oh, so, it's just like, so false. I hate you. No, I would never be like that. <laughs> what do you yeah. like? think? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's true. I think they're just acting so much calmer now. They're trying to play the crowd, the audience outside, and trying to make everyone like them and be like, oh, I'm so happy, and oh, I don't mind leaving, but they all do, really. Yeah. So do you think maybe we're going to have quite a calm week this week, then? No, no. no. Who said no? Me. That was a really fun... No. No. <laughs> Definitely not. I don't want there to, to be a calm week this week. There hasn't been one so far, has there? No, there hasn't. But what I do think is I think Dan has actually sussed it out, and I think that maybe it will all come out on Friday. 
Do you think Dan is going to say something Friday? Yeah, I do. No, I hope. The, I hope he does. He's going to turn around and say, "I told you so." He always does. Yeah, Every time someone works it out. he does always but tell no, them so. The He's guessed it right so Not far all the, time. all the way. The twins have sussed it out. Dexter's sussed it out. He just says, "Oh, I told you so." Afterwards. No. Yeah. He says, "I told you so." We've seen him sit there and go, "I think this might happen." It goes, "Oh my goodness, Dan's up." So, right. do they not yeah. find out until Friday? About do you know what? I don't even know when they find out. <gasps> yeah. Okay. I'm meant to be the host of the show, and I know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, tonight, though, we've seen Callum become house therapist. Oh, wow. How much did he enjoy that team? Wow. Band? He was, oh, he was loving it, like, kind of savouring every bit of it. And, but I, I did feel sorry for him with Dexter. He was, it was so cringy and awkward. <laughs> and Dexter, like, going, I need to finish my biscuit, you know. I just felt like... Oh, and he really, yeah. he really used it as an opportunity, didn't he, Scott, to, put to him kind down, of assassinate yeah. his character. I mean, he well, really yeah. kind of... Well, Dexter just wants to be the prominent one in the house. He wants to have all oh. the attention. And so, basically, he wants to be the important one, and he's trying to bring down Callum by, yeah, assassinating his character. He wants to, you know... Mm. He, he's so aware of his situation in the house, and he's constantly changing himself uh, and what he's saying around everyone to, to <gasps> give him the centre stage that... He's trying to use this as, you know, Callum is really cringeworthy, to be honest. He's so cringeworthy <laughs> when he's trying to be serious all the time. And when he was being the psychologist, he was so cringeworthy. Yeah. Dex yeah. is going to use whatever is at his advantage to do it and, like, you know, bring his position up in the house is basically what he's done. Mark, would you tell yeah. Callum your problems? No. No way. <laughs> <laughs> because he might get his little twiddly bit of wire out. And go, <laughs> I know. It's like, oh, I oh, see weird oh things for you in the past <laughs> future. And happy As my old man used to say, Bulls <laughs> bullshit baffles brains, and I think he's full of it, Callum. And uh, he played that so well, that role of... Um, he was spot. really in yeah. character with yeah. the mouth and the eyes, and it was all very... Mm. Really, yeah. I think he might have been on the couch a bit. Well, it's showing his self-consciousness. He's so self-conscious He's always talking to the cameras, mm. and he, when he, he started crying when he's been when he's been speaking to Sam, um, and he was doing that, and he pulled these all these faces. I was like, he's so aware of the cameras, like mm. he's just pulling all these faces, you know, to come across as as good as he can to the. And he's tying Charlie in knots with all his. She doesn't really know where to turn or who to believe or what to listen to or she's... And she's, she's right. She's in a whirlwind of, <laughs> yeah. of, is it secrets and lies, what is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, she's completely a mess with it, poor old Charlie. She's got no idea what I think she's on. just more simple and down to earth than the rest of them. Like, Dex is so in tune with everything, he knows what he's doing. Charlie doesn't, she's just says what she thinks and doesn't realise what effect is it's going to have Is this going to give anymore. him power, though? Because every housemate went in there and told him exactly what they thought of certain people. I mean, a lot of it obviously was aimed at him or at Dexter, but he holds that knowledge of what people have that, said now. That's why Dexter was so... He was jealous of um, Callum being given that task. Dexter wants that authority and he couldn't have it, so that's why he was trying to bring Callum down. He did play Callum like a fiddle, though, didn't he, Dexter? He, like, you yeah. play yeah. him... He's very, he's he's very like good at... He's hilarious. Very yeah. good. He makes me laugh, um, Dexter. He said that he was picked by Big Brother to do the task because he is trusted in the house. <laughs> <laughs> That was a, a very full-on snigger you just no. did then. <laughs> Hi, Emma. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. So do you think he's trusted in the house? Absolutely not. You can't trust him as far as you can throw him, to be fair. No. I think the are problem is... Callum, right? Not Dexter? Yes, we're talking about well, Callum. both of them, really. Mm. I think Callum is kind of a bit jealous of Dexter because, as you've noticed, that Charlie's is tend to talk, talk to Dexter more and then Callum kind of wants that because he wants Charlie to be wifey. Yeah. But to be fair, the whole triangle is the love triangle is like the budget version of Twilight. To be fair, it's, well, it's not really non-existent, special. is it? <laughs> no, it's not. And to be quite honest, I'm really bored of here. Yeah. I'm yeah. Bored of hearing about it and them talking about it because there's nothing going on apart yeah. from let's get a little bit more airtime. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't be saying this. Uh, let's move on to uh, Sam's session with Callum, and it saw him address his hearing issues. Um, uh, Mark, do you think any of us had really appreciated how difficult this is for Sam being in there? No, it's, uh, I don't think so because he's so good at uh, he's, he's, you know he's so clever at actually hearing when he can't because I hear he's got 20% hearing. Yeah, I think, yeah, I so, think he has lost 80% in one ear and is it 90% or 80% in both That's quite amazing. In, in so he has ears. to yeah. see your mouth moving. Yeah, he does have hearing aids, but he does lip read as and well. And he's in a house, it's that wooden house, yeah. and when they're all talking at once, you think, oh, that's right, he's not hearing anything, that lad. Yeah, it and must be quite, quite difficult. It gets depressing for him, he must go and lie in his bed and go, oh, good, I don't have to try and listen to anybody, I'll just have a lie down. <laughs> yeah. Let's just not listen to all of those people who yeah, just want to no, talk just, about themselves. Exactly, because he's so um, down to Are you surprised they don't make more of an effort with so, him, Tina? Uh, yeah, or not. Mark. 
Yeah, yeah I'm, okay. I'm surprised <laughs> that... <laughs> oh, no, no. Um, yeah, I think... I am a bit surprised, actually, because he seems... He's such a sweet little guy, and, yeah. um, and everyone's sort of um, ignoring him a bit. Well, I think they're, they're also involved yeah. in what's happening with themselves, aren't they? They don't seem yeah. to really be thinking about... You know, it's, it's, it's going to be quite They're difficult for Sam There's to keep no up time. with everything that's going no on. No time for compassion. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no this, this is Big like Brother. Doggy this dog. is Big Brother. Strap line. Dog. No time for compassion. <laughs> uh, thank you. On that note, we'll leave it. Uh, right, coming up, your next helping of uh, Dish on the Side. Plus, we'll be analysing the housemates... Dance move. <laughs> 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 They're like pink flamingos. They're beautiful. Uh, so another eviction wins this Friday. Thank you so much for clapping them. They'll love that. Uh, who goes? You decide. <laughs> This week, Dan, Sam and Sophie all face the public vote. Who goes? You decide. From a landline call 090 2050 58 and add the number of the housemate you want to evict. From a mobile call 650 58 and add the number of the housemate you want to evict. For Dan, add 04. For Sam, add 12. For Sophie, add 13. Mobile and BT landline votes cost 35p. Other landlines may vary. Voting closes in Friday's eviction show. Votes cast after the lines close won't count. And for full terms, go to channel5.com forward slash Bibi vote. The show with more light and shade than Charlie Travers hair. Uh, you're a very good audience tonight, just so. Give yourself a round of applause. Uh, time now for something more exclusive than any exclusive we have ever shown ever before. It's that exclusive. It might not be quite that exclusive, but it's still good, so have a look. Good morning and welcome to television's hottest new game show, oh. The Right Answer. With your handsome host, it's Big Brother. The aim of the game is to answer as many questions correctly as possible. But answering questions isn't going to be easy, as contestants have to answer questions in a whole host of different ways. Woo! Woo! It's time for our first question, oh. and this delicious dilemma is just for... Hazel! Woo! Right. It's not going to be delicious. Hazel, your question is this. What did the viewers say they would like to see you eat for breakfast? For £50, <laughs> eat the answer. It's only £50. <laughs> I hope there's not snots in it or anything. Oh. Oh. There's hairs hanging off oh. it! <laughs> okay. Is it a real pig's nose? Oh, oh, oh. oh it's oh. Real... Go on, Hazel. I should cry. Oh! oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's grim. Um, there's going to be more on the shopping task in the news later on in the show. Now, when it comes to analysing our housemates, we have left no stone unturned this year. Body language, tick, psychological behaviour, absolutely. Coffee cups and asparagus. Well, of course. Uh, and tonight, we are analysing the housemates' dance moves. And boy, can they throw some shapes. Is about. Please welcome dance psychologist Dr. Peter Lovett. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you very it's much. It's so nice to have you here. So, so firstly, what does a dance psychologist do exactly? Well, I run a university lab, a dance psychology lab. Right. And in the lab, we look at the science behind all aspects of dancing. So okay. we look at the effect that dancing has on your thinking and problem-solving abilities, okay. which is incredible. Yeah. We look at how dancing affects your health and well-being, and we look at how we communicate through dance. 
OK, let me visualise this lab. Do you have lots of people in there just dancing 24 hours a day? We do. We do. We have scientists in white coats. We have all kinds of technical kits. I want to work we... at Peter's <laughs> place! It sounds like so much fun! It's cool. Um, so how much can dancing tell us about a person? Well, dancing can tell us all kinds of things. It can tell us about your hormonal and genetic makeup. Just by the way you move. No. Yeah, there really, really is. A bit, yeah, real science on this. It's fantastic. And it can tell you all about your interpersonal relationships. So it can tell you about how you interact with other people and your personality. So is it similar to just, not just, but is it similar to body language? When you're, when you, uh, uh, psychologists are reading body language, you're reading body language through dance moves? Well, the body language, dance psychology is like body language on steroids. It's <laughs> huge. No, okay. <laughs> we're born to dance. So every one of us was born to dance. We, animals are born to dance. Peacocks are born to dance. And so it's entirely natural. And what we're understanding is the biology behind that, the psychology behind it. And how does, you, how does that affect your brain? It's incredible. I love how excited yeah. Peter gets about this. Uh, now, the house can be um, a very quiet place, as we know, there's a lot of downtime, uh, but when Big Brother blasts in a tune, um, mm. it never fails to make those housemates get up and start moving. So, very quickly, let's yeah. take a look at them doing that. Okay. <laughs> Right, so what, did, what stood out for you in that clip? What did you pick up? Well, there were three things that really stood out for me. Firstly, there was Dan. Yeah. Now, Dan, of course, when he's normally in the house, he's using his voice all the time. He's quite controlling, he's very authoritative, and he's got a certain... He's a Mr Fixer in the house, isn't yeah. he? But when he's dancing, we see a completely different side to his personality. He lets everything go, he's relaxed, and he's enjoying himself. He's much more bubbly and excitable, isn't yeah, he? he that, yeah, that's, that's his real personality. And why dancing is so great to see Dan's other side is because it sh allows him to say things with his body that he couldn't possibly say with his voice. It's fantastic. Um, and what about Gina? She seemed a little less enthusiastic by getting up and shaking her booty to J-Lo. Yeah, well, Gina never really dances. She always really holds back. There's something about Gina. Now, of course, she's very concerned about her look, her hair and her appearance, and her dancing is So is she is more measured, same. do you think, she's in, much in everything more she does? Everything, yeah. She's trying to put on a particular image, and she's showing us her, that image, and she's not allowing us to see her natural, her natural juices coming out through the way that she moves. What do, you, oh. <laughs> uh, what do you think her natural juices might be? Well, they might be... Uh, well, no, but those are the juices that come out when you're dancing. They really are. So her natural juices might be passion, they might be excitement, it might be lust, it might be all kinds of things that she doesn't want us to see. She might have... There might be certain people in the house she wants to have relationships with, but she can't, and she won't allow herself to it so she holds it all she's in. she's got this barrier. It's, it's like a, yeah, we, we work with lots of people in the lab trying to help them overcome that barrier so they can get out of themselves and, and show who they really are when they dance. Okay, and Hazel caught your eye as well? Hazel definitely caught my eye. Uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely <laughs> caught did. my eye. Now, Hazel was in this fantastic thing. What she did, I'm going to just take my jacket off just to show you exactly okay. what Hazel was doing. Oh, yeah. Now, Hazel, when you look at Hazel, she was all in the hips. Right, so she yeah. was doing all this kind of hip-based -based movement, dancing. Yeah. Everything else is quite, quite, quite static up here. And what we know is that women who are at the fertile stage of their menstrual cycle, they dance just <laughs> like this. And what's even more amazing is that when we put eye-tracking glasses on men in the lab and say, look at this woman's body, you know, we'll, you know have a look and see how attractive she is, yeah. they look straight down at the hip region and they go, whoa, she is very attractive. And this is what And that's Hazel's because doing. they know that she's, she's at her peak time they, of they her will know that. cycle. They will. They, they will know that. And when women are at the less fertile stage of their cycle, they still move their hips, but their arms go, their feet go, <laughs> all kinds of things happen. And then the guys look all over their bodies and they go, no, not so attractive. <gasps> Even the same woman dancing. So it's dancing. like a mating ritual. Completely it's a mating ritual. Dance is the most natural thing in the world to communicate stuff about your biology and your chemistry so that other people go, ooh, I like that. Honestly, it's fantastic. I love Peter. <laughs> oh, I just want you to talk. Also. Um, so, so at different points in your cycle, you'll dance differently you throughout the month going yeah. out to a club. I, I I'm fascinated by this you story. Should, I shouldn't say, but there's a, there's a, a, a famous um, psych, a study done in a strip joint where they found that the women, the strippers, who were at the fertile stage of their cycle earned more tips than the, the, than the lap dancers, actually, who were at the less fertile stage of their cycle. So guys just sat there. These guys sat there when the woman's sort of dancing around and doing all this stuff. <laughs> they can tell. They can tell. That's amazing.
amazing. It's incredible. OK. And they, <laughs> anyway, so yes, the guys can tell. You, you, you've talked about strip clubs. Dexter knows yeah. a lot about those strip clubs so, because he's worked in quite a lot of them, apparently. Yeah. So let's talk about him. He said that yeah. he can pick up a woman in any club. Shall we see his moves? Yeah, let's try that, okay. yeah. OK. <laughs> I can't dance this show. He's not going to pick up a woman, is he? Let's face it. <laughs> he might pick up somebody else, but definitely not a woman. Now, the way he's dancing, I'm not being un unkind, no. but the way he was dancing, he was dancing like a low testosterone man. Now, men right. vary in, their, in, in the amount of testosterone they have in their system. They're prenatal okay. testosterone. We're born with it. So, yeah. Some men have a huge amount, yeah. and some men have a very small amount. Yeah. And some women prefer men who have a high level of testosterone. Okay. okay. So now, Dexter we, we, has a low testosterone dance routine. Absolutely. So yeah. what is a high level of testosterone dance routine? Well, I mean, a man what's the with difference? well, we've, we've seen this in the lab thousands of times. Men with high testosterone do three things when they're dancing in the lab. First of all, they, they dance and they coordinate different parts of their body. So they're the top half and the bottom half of their bodies are kind of coordinated together, yeah. and they've got this bit of a groove thing going on. Yeah. So they, so they do a bit, a bit of that. Thank you. And then the second thing, thing, thing they do is they coordinate with a rhythm. So they might pick up a rhythm and, and cut the rhythm up in lots of different yeah. ways. And now I need you to stand up for this last bit. And, uh, <laughs> and what they do, now let, let, let's dance like we're at a party or a wedding or something. Just, just imagine we've got, um, we've got this groove going on. Now, if I can coordinate my rhythm to your rhythm, then the idea would be... Oh, oh that's nice. Now, what I'm doing... Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, I'm not picking up. I'm not copying your movements in the way that he was doing. Because Dexter was, was doing all this up my stuff. Beat. I was picking up your beat, and we were sharing <laughs> movements. We we're having this contagion of movement between us. Yeah. And when you get that kind of relationship on the dance floor, that's when people go, "Oh, this feels good." And of course, sexy time. Yeah, sexy time. <laughs> okay. And the great thing is, it doesn't matter how good a dancer you are, but if you can just do that with somebody else, you can be two awful dancers, but be coordinated with each other. Okay. And you like to find each other very attractive on the dance floor. Okay. To, uh, sorry, I've got. Uh, we've got to get yeah. as much in as we yeah. can. Talk Talking about awful dancers, let's talk about Callum. Because yeah. oh, yeah. uh, we all saw him. Yeah. Um, we all saw him in the uh, in the safe house. Let's have a little look. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we're all we're all going to be like. It's awful, isn't it? It's awful. Now. I'm going to ask you a question, yeah. and I don't mind if you can't answer it, but what okay. the hell was going on there? Well, he's over-projecting. He's dancing like a dad. He's doing dad dancing, and he's far too young to do that. Yeah. Biologically, we see normally men in their mid-40s doing dad dancing. Over-exaggerated movements, too big movements, off the, off the beat, and it's very unattractive indeed. What he needs to do is control everything right down, and then we'll see his natural rhythm coming through. So it's that whole thing. If he can just kind of just listen to a rhythm and feel the beat coming through his body and just letting it ooze through his pores then he'll be much more attractive when he dances. So but we're not seeing the real Callum through no. his dance moves. So is this a, a deflection, um, you know, a, a kind of barrier again to kind of... He said that he's quite insecure, so is this yeah. another way to cover up his insecurities by being a bit wacky and Yeah, I mean, he crazy. does it verbally, so we don't really know who the, who the real Callum is, do we? And we're certainly... He's covering that up with his body as well. He's not showing us who the real him is. Yeah. Um, but by doing all that sort of clown-like, exaggerated dancing, which is just, just too big for him. He's showing us a little bit of David Brent. That's what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, Peter, please come back every single day. That would be wonderful. Uh, give it up for Peter, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, it's time now to see what happened when the bit on the side producers asked Charlie Dexter and Callum to fill a bit of airtime in the diary room. Now, this menage a trois could have gone a number of ways. I am just hoping it goes the way that they keep their clothes on. Reality bites back, back, back. Yeah. Hello, Charlie, Callum and Dexter. Hello. Hello. You're very chirpy. With seven shows a week to make, the producers of Brick Brothers Bit on the Side have run out of ideas and have a slot to fill. Your time starts now. I'm sick of this whole triangle! <laughs> <laughs> we might as well go with it. Oh. <laughs> what do you think? What do you want to do? You're the, you're the smart... Don't put this on me. Intelligent. You're the creative one. 
Um, <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm done with it. You have her. I'm sick of her. You have her. Really? Yep. You sure? Yeah. Then let's not go okay, then. Okay. See, I told you, yeah, I knew you okay, wouldn't Okay, what like about it. a song? Should we dance? Should we do the Charleston? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not no, working. No, it's not working. <laughs> it's not working at all. We are the worst oh people. Oh my god, we are so boring. Yeah, so boring. So okay. boring. Um, a song. Right, tell the story, someone. Um, <laughs> there once was a young girl, Callum born Pisa. in a no, village. No, 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 no called, stories. No stories. <laughs> called no Charleston. No kind of stories. Charleston was a very, Dexter. very lovely young lady, <laughs> and she went wandering one day. She said, "Mama, father, I'm going into the woods." So, I don't know where I'm going with this. Help. <laughs> when Charleston, she got to the woods. <laughs> She found a prince, and Prince Nutella wanted to take her away <laughs> to a faraway land, a land full of dreams and whimsical destiny. And then the man realised all is all wasn't what it seemed. I think they're going to really regret bringing us three up here together. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. That's, not, that's my contribution. The I don't know what to do. Sophie, Sophie, don't call her the baby. You'll regret it if you mess with her. Trust me, m maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, Sam, as cringy as you can, but can kick a football like that Beckham man. Nice. Thank you. Oh my God, I'm embarrassed. How do you think you performed? Absolutely. Just cut that bit. Delete. Welcome back to Big Brother's Bit on the Side. Now, we are a lot like Sam, because if the thunderstorms called all the power to go out in the studio, we would probably go and knock one out too, wouldn't we? Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Mark! <laughs> With Dr. Peter! <laughs> and his funky oh moves! God, amazing. <laughs> How amazing was Dr. Peter? Amazing. Absolutely amazing. brilliant. Uh, right, OK, it's time to talk about girl Legend. power, or perhaps really lack of, as this year's females are dropping like flies at the moment. We've had four of it. That is true, isn't it? It's yes. true. Uh, we've had four eviction shows uh, and we've had four females been booted out of the house. But why is this happening? I mean, they are such a likeable bunch, aren't they? A girl needs to go shopping. A girl needs treatments. A girl needs her roots done. Gina, I love your Gina. nighty. <laughs> I just want a hug for myself. <laughs> oh. Okay, so Mark, let's start with you. Why do you think the chicks have been so unpopular this year? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know because I think one of the one of the favourites is is a woman, Gina. I think she's one of the favourites. And Sophie. And Sophie, yeah, good yeah. girls. I think they're good girls. But, and they're all really strong women. I think that's the thing. They're really, really strong women. And I think if... And somehow they choose the men that aren't that strong. Because if you choose men as strong as those women, it'd be like an episode of Tool Academy or something. So... <laughs> so the men are a little bit metrosexual, sort of a little bit less. And, but all the women are like, whoa, whoa. And I think that gets on people's wick a bit. Like, oh, those girls are a bit strong. Is it... Do you think I don't, I don't because know. Because girls, are, they're maybe more competitive with each other than, you know... Men are? Well, yeah, I think, the, you know, as much as there is a sisterhood, I think girls can be quite uh, harsh to one another. Especially, um, it's a competition after all, bitchy, so why, why wouldn't you be competitive in that yeah, situation, like, I Yeah, you know, I think Hazel shows that as well. I think, I, I think Hazel really shows that about how women can play each other badly. Ooh. I think in the house this year, they're all very similar in a way that they're all assertive, they're independent, they all want to be queen bees. In my year, it was a little bit different. They, there was people who were a bit more immature, there's people who were younger, they didn't... But, this year, they've all seemed to have built their own character in the lives, and they're yeah. all very assertive and want to have a very prominent say in the house. So, basically, they're conflicting. So, maybe because they're too feisty? They're, they are very feisty. Yeah, they're yeah. feisty. 
good. And yeah, who votes? Do, you know, is it do mainly women vote and women? Well, let's ask them. Who votes? Mm. And why? Why do we think this is happening? Because each woman, each I think each woman inside the house has an agenda. As much as they say that they've got a sisterhood, I think each one of them want to be that queen bee. So okay. as soon as each of them give each other, they may give each other a hug and say, "Oh, I love you," but they'd probably push the other one down the stairs just to get to the top. <laughs> maybe. Well, I hope not. We've got health and safety and all those issues to deal with. Let's ask the women as well. I think a lot of women are very strong, and so yes. we vote each other out. Which is wrong, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is. I mean, but... unless they're deserving of it, obviously. But we should stick not... together more. <laughs> well, no. No, <laughs> <laughs> no some of the women don't, did deserve to get kicked well, out. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. Unless they deserve it. But, yeah. but, you know, just to pick women off because they're women and they're in a house and women vote, I that's think, not necessarily Yeah, but fair. women get along better with men, don't they, on the whole, than each other. We're too critical of each other. Yeah. We're yeah. too busy picking holes in, we don't like this one because of her hair, because of this, because of that. No, we shouldn't be And like, that's why we vote like them that. out. They're well, all in there for themselves. Huh? I think they're all in there for themselves. They've got their friends and they see each other, but I still think each and every one of them have got something bad to say about each other. So yeah. they've all got something. Men don't normally talk about each other, do they? They're normally laid back. They, yeah. say, they say it how it is. But women like to bitch and they like to talk behind each other's back. So they forget about the men and they're more like... Digging at the women. I'm getting really sad about being a woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, okay, let's talk about uh, Charlie and Hazel. Say they have become quite close recently. Uh, their alliance has been much stronger since Jackie left the house. Um, do you think it's a genuine friendship, Tina? Yeah, I think that's an interesting one actually, because obviously um, Charlie's mum's gone now, so yeah. she's on her own. And yeah, they have kind of attached each other, um, attached to each other. So. I think, I don't know if it's genuine though. Um, I think Charlie probably generally does like Hazel. I, I think Hazel's probably just, I, I, I don't know, I think Hazel's a game player. I really do. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there was a lot of no coming from over yeah. here. Do you think they're genuine friends? No, I don't think they are. They are. I think Hazel's a game player and she uses everyone in the house to kind of get to where she's getting. She's got a game plan and she knows what she wants to do. She kind of wants to get to the top. I think. Hayes, um, Charlie is just another obstacle in her kind of race yeah. sort of thing. Just someone yeah. in the way to kind of get out of the way because as you've seen her talking about Charlie, discussing Charlie when really she shouldn't be if that's her true friend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about, we, uh, we've seen, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but we've got lots of girls to talk about. Um, Hazel and, uh, and Gina, they've uh -huh. been... They, you know, they weren't getting on. Gina was very direct about what she thought about Hazel when they had the, mm. those question and answers in a safe house. <laughs> um, but, but, but we've had some nice conversations <clears throat> from them recently. So do you think that frostiness is going, Mark? Well, I don't know. I think because Gina's a nice woman. She's got a good heart. Yeah. You know, and I think Hazel's playing on that. I think you had a psychologist on here um, um, uh, who talked about the Queen Bees and that yeah. once Daly left and she'd run out of boys to play, she would go to Gina because yeah. uh, mm. she saw her as a threat. And that's exactly what's happening. She's gone to Ginny because she knows, okay, she might be a bit of a favourite because she's been nominated a lot, and but she's not kicked out. Yeah. So, yes, she, uh, you know, she makes me squirm Trying a bit, Trying to keep Hazel. her on side, do you yeah. think? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she wants, she wants to use um, Gina's popularity. Gina, to... um, they all know Gina's popular because they've heard the crowd go, Gina, yeah. yeah. I think Hazel, she is as well, so, isn't she? Hazel's she has playing a massive game so well. plan. Yeah. Like, when the whole daily thing, she was doing that all for her own image and likes. What she was oh, thinking yeah. about the outside. She's doing exactly the same in here. People in this series keep changing themselves to appear as good as they can to the outside or to do as much provoking as they can that will help them on the outside. She's doing exactly this. Yeah. She's doing okay, that. Okay, very quickly, let's mention Sophie. Uh, is she going to break the tradition this week uh, in, you know, being not the girl that leaves? Yeah, well, I hope so, yeah. What do we... What, what, what? No, Very quickly. Sophie's not going, I don't think. So no. I think Sam will go because it's um, vote to evict and it's you not vote Sam to save. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, people no, won't no, phone no, and, no, and no, they'll no. phone up to evict him. They won't save him because it's vote to evict. They will not save him. Oh, no! I don't want e any all three of them to go. They're such great characters. Sam I can't go. I mean, anyway, we've got to stop, no. Scott Mason. Yeah. <laughs> stop. I love Sam. Um, Sam so <laughs> Kinder, if you have got something to say, like Scott, he's got so much to say. Oh, no I'm time. brimming. Uh, then give us a call. I'm going to be in the phone room tomorrow. All the details are on your screens there now. Uh, right. All this talk about female housemates has made me hungry for a second course of dish on the side. Now, if you need a recap, we have Sally, Jemima, Wolfie and Jackie Travers. They're all in a room together with alcohol. It can only get worse, can't it? Have a look at this.
welcome back to Dish on the Side. Last night saw our diners Jackie, Sally, Wolfie and Jemima enjoy their entrees with a healthy amount of mm, lubrication. We return to the table for what is likely to be a rather spicy main course. I think, I think Dexter would bum someone's head off just for publicity. <laughs> bum someone's head off? How is that physically possible? <laughs> Let's just Dexter, that's what I say. Let's get fucking drunk. Are you worried about Charlie no. in there with, with them two? <clears throat> oh my god, Jemima. You don't know. No, I'm just asking. I think personally, everyone's just so, they're all horny as fuck and everyone just is going for after anyone now. They're just like, oh yeah, we've got a summer of dryness, let's just go after anyone. Charlie's anybody. probably going to hug the best of a bad bunch. You need male company there, you need a hug from yeah, a man, absolutely. you know? Yeah. And he's yeah, like a man. You know. He's more like a little boy. He is oh, like a little my boy. God. And, and the fact he wears makeup Char will put Charlie off. A hundred percent. I would think less of Charlie if she went with Dexter. Because when you watch Callum and Charlie, do you not think he genuinely does really like her, though? No, I don't since day one. Just take the whole thing with a pinch of salt. It's a joke, it's in jest. A lot of what I did with Sam, we got in did the massage. wrong way, so. No, what I did with Sam was, was you cougar. did actually flirt and you were like, cougar. No, 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 I didn't. Was she like, not cougar? Coming, he came to me a lot of the time for no. help. Sam, a lot yeah, of the did, time. Yeah. He and the thing is, as well, Jemima, when you left, he was devastated. Babe, I've seen all the diary rooms of him, and he was like, I don't fancy her. I didn't fancy him. And Jemima, him. I've got to say to you, you should never even be saying or thinking of fancying someone of 23 years old. Not in a you shouldn't even be having that in your head. Yeah. You, are mother, you are a mother. You are a mother to say. Jackie, that's not got nothing to do with it. Yes, it has, Jemima. So it's that's disgusting. I didn't fancy it. I didn't fancy it. But you shouldn't even be sitting there saying you don't fancy him. Yeah. 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 How could you even think of it anyway? That's what a lot of people think. That's what a lot of people think. You shouldn't justify it by saying, I don't you're lost in translation. I don't think you realise how old you are. The not fancying him is irrelevant. I don't think it's a bad thing. I shouldn't damn well think you do. He's 23. You are how old you are. It's disgraceful to even oh. have to say that about a Well, I do have to say that, Jackie, because that's how it's come across in the press. Yeah. So I'm just yeah, justifying myself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. End of story. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Who is the worst housemate? Callum. Cal well, mm, let me think about it. Hazel's pretty, but she's got a... Anybody who goes near anyone's boyfriend should be shot. She's intelligent, as in, I've got a massive pair of tits, I'm going to act the innocent card and p pretend that I'm nice to everybody, and really I'm just going to be evil and home wreck people. He should have said, you know what, Hazel, I've got a girlfriend on the outside. She's a home wrecker. Ah, well, plenty to digest there, I think. Uh, dessert, anyone? Join us tomorrow for our climactic final course. Sam's the most boring person in that house. Can we change the fucking topic, please? I went to have a piss and I fell off the toilet, went <laughs> up the wall. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Sally! <laughs> Welcome back to Big Brother's Bit on the Side. Now, this side represents the past five weeks, and this side represents the future. <sighs> Things aren't looking good for you. Here's today's news. At 1.52 this afternoon, with the task well underway, Dexter had a little surprise for Gina. Which housemate did you say is manipulating the situations so that people turn against you? The housemate manipulating situations so people turn against me is Callum. Wrong, wrong sir. Wrong answer. Me? Oh, yeah. I manipulate the situations. Oh. oh. You actually said that Gina was the housemate that was trying to turn housemates against you. Against you? You really think that? <clears throat> I thought that's I pretty nasty. It's... Mm. Oh, that's Ouch. Oh, is this the end of Jinx... Jinx... Jinxster as we know it? Uh, OK, straight after, Dan got himself all in a pickle when he was asked to make an announcement. Big Brother asked the viewers which housemate makes them want to change the channel. 
if it's me, I'll be so Nothing biased. like a bit of heavy breathing down the mic. Nothing like a bit of heavy breathing <laughs> slash groaning. <sighs> <laughs> the one house mate I think makes viewers want to change channel is... <laughs> the one house... <laughs> 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 the one house mate I think makes viewers want to change channel is Get it out <laughs> Jesus man <sighs> Okay the one house mate I think makes viewers want to change channel is I would thought we was gonna get there God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god please. The... Okay the one house mate I think makes viewers want to change channel is Hazel well, if you haven't changed the channel, you're in for a real treat in a sec. Because last but not least, at 3.18 this afternoon, Westlife fanatics Jack and Joe got on the blower to a mystery caller. Big Brother asked Shane Phelan which twin is his favourite, Jack or Joe? <laughs> oh, no! For £50, would Shane's favourite twin answer the phone? That's you. What do you think? Oh, Go on, see, quick, 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 run! Right. <laughs> Yeah. Do you think it's me? He's going to go, he's gonna go for Zerk. Hello? I suppose he's not going to hang up. Oh, as if it actually is. Drop me out. Is it oh my you? god, is it actually him? Let me speak. Yes. It's Jack. Is it right? Please tell me I'm right. <laughs> oh my god, I'm right! Drop <laughs> me out! I can't believe I'm speaking to you. Oh my god, you're a Westlife like Fairwell Tour's the best. Hang on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's just Joe now, and I'm just saying I'm a fan of Take That now. I'm sorry, you've ruined it. <laughs> no, you've, ruined it. you've ruined it. You've ruined it. Oh, brilliant! And apparently it was really him. I don't know about you, but that certainly raised me up. <laughs> I thought that was good. Uh, well, that's the news from today. But what's happening right now? Mark? Are you there? Are you in the camera runs? I'm here, Emma. <gasps> yes, of course What's I am. What's happening? What's happening? Oh, the smell of food. It looks like a shepherd's pie or a cottage pie of Does some it sort. Does it smell good? Oh, it smells fantastic. There's four of them. There's Callum, uh, Sophie, um, Tw Tweedledee and Tweedledummer. I don't know which ones, which ones their names are. Okay. Joe or Jack and yeah. Uh, Charlie. Yeah. And there they are having a cook-up. And they're, you know, doing it quite it well. Look, it's does all... it look like there's harmony in the kitchen? Yeah, harmony. It's, all, it's like the weirdest commune in the world, isn't it? Just looking at the floor, it looks like it really could do with a clean. I mean, they, they are living in a pigsty. Does it ever make you want to go in there, Mark? Not to clean up, but well, I mean, just to <laughs> see what it's like. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. It makes me think. And then, yes and no. <laughs> Why no, Mark? <laughs> um, but they're all doing well, so the rest must be out in the rest must be out in the garden or something. Em, I don't know what they're doing. Okay. Uh, I think we, uh, it's quite amazing how this works. Because uh, just over there's the bedroom. We had, had a look at uh, Dexter and he's put some more makeup on in there. Um, it's yeah, quite what's an that amazing, about? It's quite an amazing light. Oh, yeah, what's he just knows, doesn't he? He just knows. Uh, he loves being camera ready, doesn't he? He loves being camera well, ready. He did get covered in shit earlier. Um, apparently, he got he got carried in. Was that real shit? Yeah. He got carried, covered in shit earlier, so mm. maybe that's why he's put his makeup oh, on. Oh no, did he? Yeah. yeah oh. On that note, Mark, I'll leave you pondering and looking. That's disgusting. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> Hold right. on a second. Yeah. Explain. Uh, it was part of uh, the task. They had to gunge the person that they think was the correct answer. But this isn't real poo. Well, we don't. It's secrets and lies. It could be real poo. Of course poo. it's not. It's not real we couldn't poo. couldn't do that. Health and safety. Yeah. Um, OK. What, OK. I've what, got, what I've got a plug. Um, there is a official Big Brother game that you can play on your Apple-branded device. Um, on channel5.com slash bbgame is where yeah. to go to download it. There's trivia, there's yeah. predictions, there's polls, uh, updated every day, and there's a leaderboard for whoever does best so you can rank yourself against other Big Brother fans. Oh. It's really cool. Oh, so I could play trivia, Big Brother trivia, against other people. You can see people. how good you really are, oh, Emma no, Willis. I, well, see, if I had time, I would. But I'm always time. here working. Yeah, working. Yeah. what cool else you that. got? Um, well, we've just been debating online, um, similar to you, about why is it the women? Why is it the women and that keep getting evicted? Say? Stephen Lee says it's just the way things fell after nominations. The right housemates went each time, which mm. I think you can see on a case by case basis. But it's a trend, isn't it? It's always women that go first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kirsty Leanne says it's because Big Brother tends to pick shit female housemates. <gasps> 
female yeah, really housemates. Good. And Ian Taylor says it's because women vote more than men and they don't like strong females, which I think might be more of the crux of the matter. That's what people have been saying in the mm -hmm. audience tonight. Um, Ian, hit me there, brother. What a great show. That, though, is all we've got Wicked. time for. Huge thank you to all my guests and a wonderful Tuesday audience. Joining me tomorrow are Michelle Gale. Uh, made in Chelsea's Ash Ashley James and Cheska Hull and body laundry expert Dame Judy Dench. No, Jane, Do Judy James. Oh. Good night. <laughs>